Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me in Alexandra Park for episode two of our Morris's Manchester Bimble. Sorry it's been a while, but there's been rather unclement weather. The rain falls hard in a humdrum town. So let's stop messing about. And let's go and find out about these rush home ruffians. Let's bimble. So Bimblers, we reach Rush Home, in particular Platt Hall, which is in Platt Fields. Morrissey sings about Rush Home in the song Rush Home Ruffians, from the Smiths album Meet His Murder. It's all about the last night of the fair, which must have been here in Platt Fields or on the other side of Rush Home in Whitworth Park. I think it was probably Platt Fields. Morrissey sings, a boy was stabbed and his money was grabbed and the air hangs heavy like a dulling wine. Well, I don't know about the wine, but the curry's pretty good. If you make the pilgrimage here, you'll have to come one evening. After it goes dark, it's lit up like Blackpool illuminations. Vegetarian options are available. But Rush Home also has some history to do with pop music outside of the Smiths. So let's bimble. Going back a few years now, Bimblers, there would have been a Wesleyan Methodist church here on Dickinson Road in Rush Home. And it was converted into a TV studios called Dickinson Road Studios. On the 1st of January 1964, it's where they broadcast the first episode of Top of the Pops. Who was presenting that day? Well, Alan Freeman and Jimmy Savile. A schoolgirl is denied, probably not on that day first on the show would have been the Rolling Stones performing I Want to Be Your Man as written by Lennon and McCartney. As a Rolling Stones and Smiths related fact they were both signed in America by the same man Seymour Stein. Apparently Seymour Stein bought Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones a guitar in New York and Johnny Marr said to him the Smiths will sign to Sire Records if you buy me a guitar in New York. And Seymour Stein did. He bought him that red 335 that he wrote Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now on. Very famous Smith related guitar. That all happened on the 2nd of January 1984, 20 years after the first episode of Top of the Pops was broadcast from Rush Home. But there's more Manchester musical facts just at the end of Dickinson Road. Let's be more.
just at the crossroads between Dickinson Road and Anson Road, you'll find Venus Supermarket. It used to be a music venue, and that music venue was owned by the ex-manager of the Stone Roses. That's a fella named Gareth Evans. Gareth Evans and the Stone Roses had quite the fallout. You see, Gareth Evans was a bit of a strange character. He studied to be a hairdresser under Vidal Sassoon, and he used to sell underpants, and he made a lot of the Stone Roses' money disappear. Liar, liar, hairdresser on fire. The venue was called The International, and according to my big book of Bimble, such bands as The Smashing Pumpkins, Nine Inch Nails, Ocean Colour Scene, A Certain Ratio, Dr. Feelgood, Echo and the Bunnymen, The Manic Street Preachers, Soundgarden, and Chumba Wumba played there. Let's bimble. She loves the, she loves the rain. What would you do if you were minding your business, lifting some lead off the roof of the Holy Name Church, and you seen a vicar in a tutu? It's something that Morrissey tells us about in the Smith song, Vicar in a Tutu, from the album The Queen Is Dead. Behind me is the Holy Name Church, and it was designed by a fella that we've mentioned a couple of times on the channel, both in my pilling bimble and one of my trans pennine bimbles. It was a fella by the name of Joseph Hansom, he had a brother named Charles Hansom, and he designed St. Thomas and St. Elizabeth's Church in Thurnham. That was in my pilling bimble that we visited that. Joseph Hansom designed St. Wahlberg's Church in Preston, with the third tallest spire in the UK. That's the one we visited in my Trans Pennine bimble. Joseph Hansom also designed the Hansom Carriage, which superseded the Hackney Carriage as the horse-drawn taxi of choice in London. Pot fact about horse-drawn taxis and about the motorised taxis that we see today and the reason why they're all black they're yellow everywhere else in the world so that you can see them on the street it all goes back to Queen Victoria when her husband Prince Albert died she went into mourning and she said that no taxi carriages were allowed into Buckingham Palace unless they were black so everyone painted the horse-drawn taxis black and that's the reason why our motorised taxis are also black to this day Giddy London. Let's spend more. due to us being in the area it would be rather remiss of me if we didn't visit this Epping walkway it's where those classic pictures of Joy Division were taken you know walking around in the snow with Ian Curtis looking all miserable and all blue eyes that was here on Epping walkway it would have looked out across Hume 
which would have been a concrete jungle at the time. Not so these days. Rob Gretton, the manager of Joy Division, took the legendary R&B singer Dino Washington to a house party over in Hume one time. And at that house party was Ian Brown from the Stone Roses. And Dino Washington said he should become a singer and said he was a star. And he was right. Anyway, what about all these venues in Manchester? The Smiths must have played at a few of those, mustn't they? Let's be more. If we're going to talk about all the venues that the Smiths played here in Manchester, this is probably the best place to start. This is the Ritz, and this is where the Smiths did their first gig. On the 4th of October, 1982, they were introduced on stage by one of Morris's friends, James Maker, and he apparently accompanied them on maracas, kind of like Bez. The people in the crowd say that he wore high heels, but James Maker refutes that. He says he was actually wearing a smart court shoe. It was the first and only gig by the original bass player of the Smiths, Dale Hibbert. He was replaced by Andy Rourke, rest in peace. But there's more famous venues here in Manchester that the Smiths played in, including one very famous venue just down the way. Let's bimble. This apartment block behind me would have been the Hacienda nightclub before they knocked it down in 2002. It was actually closed in 1997. It was all paid for by New Order and Joy Division and their record label, Factory Records, as run by Tony Wilson. We visited his grave in the last episode. The Smiths played at the Hacienda on the 4th of February, the 6th of July and the 24th of November all in 1983. But there's more venues that the Smiths played at. A much bigger one, just round the corner. Let's be more. Behind me is something called the Manchester Central Convention Complex, or as it was originally known, Manchester Central Railway Station was opened by the Cheshire Lines Committee. Back in the 1980s, it was something called the GMEX. It's where all the bands used to play in Manchester, before the big arena came. The Smiths played here on the 19th of July, 1986, and they co-headlined with New Order. It was for something called the Festival of the Tenth Summer. Not the only big venue around here though. There's a much more historic one, just round the corner. Let's, um, you know. I'm sat on the steps of a very large building here in Manchester called the Free Trade Hall. 
It was built in 1856 and it commemorated the end of something called the Corn Laws. The Corn Laws were introduced to stop imported corn being sold cheaper than British corn, which on the face of it seems like a good idea. But what it meant was landowners could charge whatever rent they wanted because as they saw it, you could charge whatever you wanted for corn. It meant that American corn couldn't be imported and sold cheaper. And it meant that the price of corn skyrocketed, which to normal people meant they couldn't afford to buy flour and they couldn't afford to bake bread and people were starving. It all came to a head in 1819 with something called the Peterloo Massacre. The British cavalry were trying to break up some protests against the Corn Laws and they ended up killing quite a few men. They erected the Free Trade Hall in honour of those men that died and it's called the Free Trade Hall as in the Free Trade of Corn. As a musical side note, it's also where Bob Dylan played with his electric guitar and someone shouted Judas and he said I don't believe you and it's also where the Smiths played on the 13th of March 1984 and the 30th of October 1986 more venues coming though let's bimble On the 21st of February 1983, the Smiths played their fourth gig here at this Tesco Express, or as it would have been known at the time, Rafters Nightclub. It became known as Jilly's Rock World. That's when I used to go. It's now a Tesco's, I might go and get a meal deal. Let's bimble. This is our last and probably oddest venue that the Smiths played here in Manchester. The Smiths played at the Palace Theatre on the 31st of March 1985. They were supported by the band James. It's an odd venue because they don't usually have bands on. It's where they have pantos and they do We Will Rock You and all stage musicals. But apparently they went down very well because they did three encores. So that was where the Smiths could be heard in Manchester in the 1980s. But where can you enjoy the music of the Smiths and Morrissey in more modern times? That's Bimble. On the first Friday of every month, here at the Star and Garter, they hold the Smiths Disco. Mrs Bimbo likes that. Legend has it that the Star and Garter was originally built in 1803, only it was a hundred yards down the road. When they built Piccadilly Station and the Piccadilly to Oxford Road railway line, they apparently moved the pub brick by brick to its current location and it was reopened in 1877. It's featured heavily on the small screen and according to my big book of Bimble it's been in Band of Gold, Cracker, Prime Suspect, Cradle to Grave and recently It's a Sin amongst others. The Star and Garter is also very handy for Piccadilly Station which is where I'm off now. Mm -hmm. 